In 2016, the stock market is in timeout. Welcome to the Maluli Asset Show. I'm your host, Tom Maluli, and this is episode number 23. Now, usually we uh, find a Met who wore that uniform number, and that's kind of our little Met tribute. Who wore 23? I mean, the only one I can think of right now is Michael K. Dyer. Um, his short visit with the Mets last year didn't go so well. But also, Casey reminded me before we turned the, uh, the cameras on, Jason Phillip. Remember him? With those crazy goggles that he used to wear? So, uh, all right, we'll move on to 23, but let's not, uh, let's not give it all away. 24 is going to be a pretty easy one uh, when we get to that uh, in our next episode. But the way the format works with these videos is we get questions from you. We get questions from our clients. We get questions from our viewers. They're asking questions about the market. They're asking questions about managing money, about personal finance, about financial planning. They get in touch with us. We try and pick the best ones and put them on a video for you. So Casey, what do we have today? What are some of the reasons why the market's been behaving the way it has been? There's an old saying in the market that the market climbs up the stairs, but it comes down in the elevator. And that is so true, I've found over 30 years, that the market, in an almost boring kind of way, will slowly, steadily grind higher and then, bam, 5% down in a couple of days or 10% down in a week. It happens. And... Maybe you've seen the same thing, too, if you follow the markets on a regular basis, that the market tends to move up like it's climbing a staircase, up a little, down a little, up a little, down a little. But then when it wants to go down, boy, it comes right down in the elevator. So <clears throat> it's important not to get wrapped up in the news or noise of the day. I think that's really important. We've got a lot of different opinions right now, and the market is really in timeout. So there's times where the market has a, a quick pullback, um, you know, maybe 5%, maybe 10%, and they've turned out to be really good buying opportunities. That doesn't feel like this is really that time. It also doesn't feel like we're moving from a growth period to a recession period. I mean, we haven't had any growth, so how could we have a recession? It just doesn't make sense. But the... Um, timeout period that we're kind of going through right now is where the market just seems to be really choppy, no kind of direction at all. It reminds me a lot. We haven't had something like this, I mean, in a long time. Uh, I'm thinking like 2004, 2005 is probably the last market I can remember where we were just kind of drifting, where we, we hit uh, a, a couple of low points the last few months. We've rallied back, but the rallies have always been kind of losing steam. They never seem to make new highs. And that's kind of where we're in uh, right now. So what are the things that people are talking about that have people really concerned? Uh, we have just as many people calling us to talk about deflation as we have people calling to talk about inflation. I mean, it, it, the, the jury split. And it's interesting. Uh, in the last year, the rate of inflation in the United States has gone from 0.7 to 1.3. It's almost been a perfect double. But is that the answer? Is that the reason why the market's going down? I don't know. Uh, there's just as many people, just as many uh, people we find talking about whether the Fed should uh, raise rates. Oh, they're way behind the curve. They need to, they need to act. Um, there's just as many people out there saying, the, the Fed needs to take some really crazy action and go to negative interest rates. I mean, boy, if you think the market took it hard when we raised rates in December back from zero to a quarter point, I mean, just wait till you go negative. How are you going to raise rates from there? Think about the pain people are going to endure at that point. I mean, for just as many people out there who are 
flipping out about a Trump administration. There's just as many people worried about Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton or Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz or any of these guys. And that's going to be around. I mean, we're, we're recording this on uh, March 1st, Super Tuesday. Uh, so that discussion is going to be around for seven months, maybe longer. So I, I don't think these are things that are going to go away, and I don't think these are also the reasons why people sell. Look, you may need money for taxes to pay your tax bill. That's the reason why you're selling today. You may be buying a house today. That's why you're selling in the market. There's lots of reasons why people are selling. It just cracks me up when you see these uh, these media folk get on TV or on, on uh, different news channels, and they'll say, the market was down today because of this or because of that. They, they, what, they interview everybody who dropped a sell ticket today? It doesn't work that way. So it's really hard, though, to just channel out, just, just filter out all of that noise and just focus on what's happening. That's why, instead of ripping our hair out, we use the indicators that we follow. And the great thing about them is there's nothing on those charts that say, here's where the Fed raised rates, here's where the economy went bad, here's where something else happened. It's nothing like that. It's just buying and selling. We're just seeing supply versus demand. There's no noise at all in there to filter things out. That's what's been able to keep us on track. It's a very hard thing to do to filter out all that noise. If you've got questions about that, or if you want to talk about that some more, get in touch with us. We'd love to talk about it with you, and maybe it'll wind up being a, another topic that we'll cover in another video. But we appreciate you watching this one. This has been episode 23, and we'll see you on the next one.